My loves, okay, thanks very much for voting in the community poll. Um, the video I'm going to do this week is a video about revision. Before I start, please be sure to like um, and comment for a chance to be in the running for a free video reading from me. Once I reach 3000 subscribers, which is very close, um, I will be doing a free video reading for someone who's subscribed and who comments on the video. Um, and also be sure to hit the wiggly bell icon so you know when I'm live. I will go live once I reach 3000 subscribers to do some free card pulls for my subscribers. So it's worthwhile subscribing and commenting and having the bell icon on. Please like the videos for the energy exchange. It helps me out a lot and I appreciate it. I'm a little bit hungover today, so I'm glad that you guys went for the video on revision because <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do a card reading, but I can talk about manifestation all day long. It's my favorite topic, even if I was completely drunk, which I'm not. Um, okay, so revision is a Neville Goddard technique. If you don't know, Neville Goddard is one of the main teachers in the Law of Assumption. He's now dead, um, but he's very instrumental. He's done a lot of lectures and books that people still look at today in the Law of Assumption community. And from my experience of over 15 years worth of trying out different manifestation techniques and uh, learning various methods, I find that Neville Goddard is one that works very, his teachings work very well and the law of assumption is very um, easy to understand and put into use from my perspective. Obviously I've read a lot before it, but I really resonate with his teachings. It's not to say that he was like a god, he's just a man, and I think that any manifestation technique anyone uses or way of manifesting should be personal to them, but his tools and techniques are worth looking into. Um, revision is one of his techniques. Now, in terms of manifestation, I have a whole playlist. I recommend you guys watch it. It is really as simple as living in the wish fulfilled to manifest anything. So say you wanted to manifest, you know, I just recently did a video on how I manifested my dream trip, which should have cost like probably about 10,000 to 15,000 pounds. I manifested that for free. Um, and even the bits of it that were paid for were way less than it should have cost. I mean, the whole thing cost 2000 pounds, but I personally paid nothing. Um, but it should have cost about £15,000 anyway. So that's just how you can manifest, you know, anything you want. And the way that you do it is via imagining that you're already, you already have your desire. So you can do that through lots of different techniques, such as visualization, where you would look first person perspective, imagining that you're already where you want to be. So say I wanted to go to Bermuda, I was already walking along the beach like having a cocktail that was a very specific cocktail in Bermuda, listening to the tree frogs, which is a very significant uh, and very particular sound to Bermuda, um, and thinking I'm so pleased that I'm in Bermuda and my house is well looked after, and that I'm happy to be there. So I created a very specific visual scene that I looked at first person perspective. You can also do inner conversations where you hear yourself again, as if it's already happened and first person perspective saying to someone, I'm so pleased that I got my dream job. And they say, yes, it's amazing that you got your dream job. And then you repeat it back. Isn't it amazing that I got my dream job? And you can just loop that as like an auditory in a conversation. That's another way you can manifest or you can do scripting, which I have another video on where you write, I'm so grateful that I'm in my dream job. My life is perfect. I'm an amazing manifester or you can do affirmations, which is kind of what you do in your scripting and maybe what you do when you didn't do in a conversations where you just affirm, um, I am 59 kilograms and my dream weight and I'm so healthy and happy. I'm my dream weight and I'm so healthy and happy. Whatever it is that you want, you could just affirm it. 
So these are all different techniques and I have videos on the techniques. Revision is just another technique, but really the way you manifest anything is by the kind of feeling of the wish fulfilled. So saying affirmations gives people the feeling of the wish fulfilled and it also kind of reprograms the subconscious, but I'm less into manifesting in a way that is reprogramming the subconscious because although that works, it's more about shifting states. So I'm more about like jumping into a different state of reality. I believe that there's a multiverse that we're living in and everything that we desire is already happening in one of the um, timelines of reality. And when we consciously manifest, we're just drawing that energy towards us. Remember we're manifesting all the time, but when we talk about manifesting, what we mean is consciously manifesting because whatever you're thinking or assuming or believing is what manifests um so it's why these little inner thoughts that you often have on autopilot are what play out in your life if you think about it when you manifested everything up until you knew about manifestation you weren't sitting there visualizing what would happen or revising things or consciously assume uh, like um affirming things so it is also just about the state that you're in and your expectations and what you believe your inner beliefs basically but once you start consciously manifesting, and again, watch my whole playlist because I talk about this in other videos, you're, you're more in control of what you're manifesting. So your manifestations aren't just on autopilot, um, but you manifest all the time. Now, revision is a very good technique for changing things in the past, but it doesn't just change things in the past, it also can change your future. And the way that this works is, and if people, I mean, people, People are proving manifestation more and more via quantum physics and just psychology and neurolinguistic linguistic programming of the brain. But I'm less interested in the neurolinguistic programming of the brain aspect of manifestation because it's extremely limited. And when you start doing manifestation, you can't like, in my opinion, and this may be one of my limiting beliefs, so just take it, take what resonates with you. But I don't believe you can manifest and then try and be scientific about it unless you're someone that needs that, that your brain needs proof of things. But manifestation is like, it's not based in, um, in uh, your manifestation is based in like faith and belief and you proving things to yourself that are not logical. Um, and so trying to make it logical just seems a bit crazy to me. But science is proving this more and more, even just that when you do your affirmations, you change the way that you behave and that changes your life and all of the rest of it, right? And it changes your programming. But I'm much more into manifestation in terms of jumping into a different reality. And with revision, I believe what you're doing is you're changing the past, which changes your, you're going into a different timeline, basically, when you revise, and you're going into a different reality through changing the past. And a lot of people get revision wrong, and they think that revision is basically a really um, amazing psychological tool where you are changing how you feel about something that has happened, and because you change how you feel about it and you're no longer triggered by it, you respond differently and you're happier in yourself and you kind of let it go and that makes you happier. But really revision is changing it not just for yourself, but it changes other people's perception of what happened too. So if you've successfully revised something, you may realize that when you speak to someone about a past event, they remember it in the way you've revised it rather than them remembering it in the way that it happened. Um, so revision is a technique where you go back into the past and you change what happened in the past. Again, you can do this through visualizations, inner conversations, scripting or affirming. So for example, let's give examples because that makes it easier. And then I'll give some examples of things I've revised as well, because I like to give things from my personal experience, things I know that work because I've done them personally. Um, how you would revise, okay, say you had a history of uh, being attracted to unavailable people who treated you badly. So you have a bad relationship history. 
you know. Um, you could do revision. Now, I've done this for relationships. So this is me doing scripting with revision, okay? And I'll just read some of it, not all of it. But I started it by saying, I have always had healthy, loving relationships where I was loved and respected. And then I went through every relationship where, where it wasn't, where that wasn't the case. So I didn't bother with the ones where it was fine. I went through every one and I mentioned the person and I say, this person wanted to date me, uh, but I didn't want to be with them. Um, so I said no. That was like maybe one of my first kind of romantic experiences where I wish I'd never even dated that person. So I just write that person out. But in other things, uh, say you've had lots of breakups, you wouldn't necessarily say you didn't break up, but you may say instead that your breakup was amicable or that you were the one who decided to break up. In the past, I've dated a lot of men who've tried to convince me I was crazy when I wanted to break up with them because my intuition told me that they weren't right or that they cheated on me and they gaslit me. And so I revised a lot of that where I was like, this person, I was dating this person, but then I decided to break up with them because I knew they weren't right for me and I didn't trust them. And so basically I just revised every relationship I had that didn't go the way that it, I wish it had to empower me more. But it's not to say I just like pretended that I didn't break up with any of those people. But say you wanted to be with one of your exes, you could revise it that you guys are still together and you never broke up. So what you would do is you would write that out, right, as like a page. And then you would read it to yourself. I read it to myself first thing in the morning and last thing at night for about a week. And after about a week, when I read this, I was like, yeah, that feels like what happened. Of course, I remember the other story of what happened, you know, the truth, but it sounded like as real as the new version that I wrote. And you know when you've done it successfully because you still know the other thing technically happened, but it feels as true that the new story happened. Now remember, I'm a writer, so I love anything to do with writing. I love scripting. I manifest really well through scripting or writing. So revision where I write it and read it to myself, highly effective. As with any scripting, I could have read this out and recorded it and listened to it as well, first thing and last thing at night in my own voice speaking it. That can be very effective with your scripting or with your revision. But the point is you stop reading it to yourself when it feels kind of true. And weirdly, then one of my friends asked me about an ex and I had to think like what actually happened with that relationship because I'd revised it. But not only that, uh, one of the people that I revised, I'm still friends with but we had like a bit of a cantankerous friendship and he was still showing up in this kind of fuckboy energy even as a friend to me um and uh he's in a relationship but he was trying to like have an affair with me and all of this stuff and i like this person because they're a soul connection but not a you know we have lots of soul connections not a very significant one but i've known this person for years so i revised that and he has now started showing up as a friend in such a great way he's like oh i feel like i should be making more of an effort with you i'm like why are you being so nice suddenly he's like oh i just realized i should be making more of an effort and he's showing up in a completely different way since i revised um, and also I've spoken to people who've known me from the past and remembered my past relationships in the way that I wrote them. So it's not just that you're gaslighting yourself and you're making yourself feel better. Of course, that probably would work in a way where you then have healthier relationships going forward because you're in a better program, you're neuro-linguistically programming yourself to feel like you aren't so broken around love but it's not just that and people think that it's just that and that's so limited you're literally changing the past and it does change your future because it breaks the patterns you have for example around relationships now i would say if you're trying to manifest anything to do with love you should revise all of your past relationships because even just when you first of all i wrote out or i remembered what actually happened right and that is very good to show you your, your patterns in relationships anyway. So then you can start to identify your limiting beliefs in your relationships. And for me, it was not being chosen. Um, in fact, one of my exes actually was like one of my first relationships. I loved this guy. He in the end really loved me, but he, when we were first 
sort of getting together, he liked one of my friends before, and then he said, oh, well, she'll be a good second choice if I can't have the other one, to our mutual friend who told me. And that second best thing stuck with me until I did revision. And I totally revised that situation. But I can remember that it happened to tell you guys, but I bet if I met people from that time, they would just remember that that boyfriend was madly in love with me, which he was at the end, but the damage got done from that little thing he said, right? So revision is powerful for relationships. This is one way I recommend all clients who are trying to manifest love to, to revise all of their past relationships and see the patterns that come out when you're, when you're remembering the past. Now, I didn't actually write out my past relationship history because I had it in my my mind but it may be helpful especially because i'd worked a lot on self-concept anyway so i knew some of these things like not being chosen but if you've never done anything like this to work on self-concept then i would recommend actually writing out the truth of what happened then write out the revision the revised version and then maybe burn the original one or rip it up or do some other ritualized action to get rid of that um, but you read the, the new version to yourself first thing in the morning, last thing at night, until it feels as true as what happened. Um, and then if anything happens where you kind of get triggered again by new things in your life, repeating the pattern, you could read it to yourself again. This is one way of revising. Another way of revising is I did a visual where I was sitting in the car with my friend, first person perspective, and my friend was saying, Oh my god, it's amazing the way that you're always chosen by men and it's always you who gets to choose who you're with. And I'm like, yeah, it's so good to have that control and to be the one that's always chosen. And they're like, yeah, it's amazing. See, that's another way of revising uh, the same thing, but doing a visualization and hearing. If you don't visualize well, you could just do it through hearing someone telling you that. In general, whenever you do inner conversations, you want to be affirming very specifically whatever it is you want hearing someone then tell it back to you and then you again repeating it. So it's like three times saying what you want specifically as if it's already happened. You can imagine being on the phone with someone and doing it, whatever, you know, different techniques. Um, another way of doing revision would be with affirmations. So say I had this story of not always being chosen, I could just affirm to myself, I have always been chosen. When you put have always in front of any affirmation, you're doing instant revision as an affirmation. Do you see what I mean? Um, another thing you could do is, so now this is how I've used revision with relationships and that is very helpful and it does change how people show up in the future and in the present for me. And it does change people's memories of the past as well. Other people do revision. Now, let's talk about this because in terms of manifestation, right? Um, you are not in control of how your manifestation plays out. Okay, give an example because it will help you guys. Say you are trying to manifest being in a relationship with a specific person. I don't recommend specific people. I think there's too much attachment and you're gonna fuck yourselves over and you're gonna not actually manifest what you want unless you're really good at manifesting or good at detaching. Because a lot of people have way too much like attachment when they're doing a specific person. But say you do a specific person, which you can, um, or you're just manifesting love. And, but specific person is gonna make the example clearer say you're manifesting a specific person and you've done what you need to do to manifest which is you've imagined your end scene and that's it you just need to imagine the end scene whether it's through an inner conversation a visualization or through scripting how you your end scene right as if it's happening um or you just affirm i'm happily married to blah -de blah okay technically after you've done enough manifestation techniques that it feels like this thing has happened in the, in the moment that you're imagining it you can detach and stop doing any techniques and you can just live in the present and trust that anything that happens in your 3d reality is a bridge of incidents to your end goal now if you watch the video i did about manifesting my holiday part of me manifesting that whole holiday for free including getting a massive credit on my room and upgrade to the best room was that my internet was bad for two days so that seems like something that's annoying right but 
I know about manifestation now. I know when I can feel when a manifestation's unfolding. And I even said, I bet because my internet's bad, I'm gonna get a, a room upgrade and a credit. And that's what happened. But if I was the type of person that manifests in a way where you're manifesting to solve problems rather than manifesting the end, I may have tried to revise that my internet connection was bad because you're just kind of using manifestation to put out fires. And that might have actually fucked up my original manifestation of getting the free holiday. This is actually a very crucial point, which is not really about revision, but I mean, I'm just gonna talk about it in this video. But when you're manifesting, you should really just do the end scene and whatever happens in the 3D reality, you shouldn't try to mess with it because you don't know how the bridge of incidents is gonna unfold. So for example, you're manifesting a specific person and this person shows up in your life and they're being a, a dick. Most people would then try and manifest and micromanage every conversation they have with this person so that this person is always behaving how they want them to behave in the here and now, in the short term. They're then setting all these other manifestations into process um, and there may be delaying their original one which had a bridge of incidents where this person needed to be a prick so that you would then behave differently so that they would then do you see what I mean you can never know how your manifestation is going to play out so that's why I only do revision for patterns I have in the past rather than say for example i'm manifesting a specific person and this person blocks me i wouldn't do specific people anyway but say that happened i would not revise this person blocking me because i don't i would trust that whatever happens after i've man done the manifestation scene or the imaginal scene is the bridge of incidents to this person being in my life even if it's that they blocked me and I suppose that belief that whatever is happening is towards your end goal is what will make things manifest for you. And I trust that now because I've manifested enough. So it's easy for me not to react or respond. And when we say react or respond, we don't mean like saying something in the 3D, but react or respond as in getting triggered. When something happens, I'm just like, well, it just means my manifestation's coming. Unless I was manifesting a specific person and that person died, I would assume anything that happened even them getting married to someone else would be a bridge of incidents to my manifestation and when you think that way it's not going to be that they marry someone else it's going to be that things happen quite quickly um but if they need to marry somebody else first for you to get your end result maybe that's the way your manifestation plays out they have to know that they're deeply unhappy married to someone else you have to have this kind of inner belief in your in the power of manifestation that whatever is happening is for your manifestation and i'm saying this in regards to revision because i don't want you guys to use revision in a way you're micromanaging your life and putting out fires um but say something in your life comes up where you haven't done an imaginal scene so for example i have used revision for bills so I obviously affirm and script that I'm abundant, that I have X amount of money a day, that I have X amount of money a month, and I start, I've started to accomplish those things that I'm affirming and scripting for. But sometimes I'll just get random bill, right? And I'll be like, oh, I don't wanna pay that. For example, the council tax recently got hacked. Hackney Council, my council, got hacked last year. So they recently sent me a bill for last year because they fucked up. They sent me a bill that was for all this money that I apparently owed them because of their mistake. And I was like, hell no. That's where revision comes in. See, me revising that is not messing up another manifestation of mine. It's its own manifestation. I've never manifested anything for Hackney Council before, so them giving me this bill is not a bridge of incidents, it's just an annoying thing that has happened because they've made a mistake. I don't think I manifested it even, I don't think that I'm responsible for getting that bill, I just think it's life. Sometimes things are life. Um, of course we do manifest everything in our reality, but you don't need to micromanage your reality, you just need to, you know, focus on what you want, and then if little things come up that annoy you that you haven't already tried to manifest something for, use revision for them because you're not interfering. Do you, I hope you guys are following. I guess this is a kind of advanced video for people who really understand manifestation, but whatever, I, I want my, my channel to not be like, you know, I want my channel to be teaching people stuff. So 
I'm going to assume that my audience are intelligent and they sort of know what I'm talking about. If not, watch my other... If you're new to this, watch my other playlist to understand the basics and then watch this. But yeah, so the Hackney Council thing, I revised that. I was like, no, 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 no. They've apologised to me and I don't owe them anything. And of course that's what happened. Um, and I, one of the first times I did revision, I didn't know I was doing revision, but it was for a similar thing. I did know about manifestation because I read my old manifestation journal out in my journaling um, video that I did on the channel. And I remember that I was at art school in that because I was, because basically I was at um, uh, the Royal College of Art and I graduated in 2015 and at that time it was very sexist um, I was very psychic so I was always a conduit for everyone's issues with the department I kind of stood up to a lot of sexism because me too wasn't cool then so I got a lot of hatred because of that you know whatever I also probably like manifested it being even more like that because I felt like a victim because I kind of knew about law of attraction but I didn't know how to manifest properly my scripting back then wasn't that great but it still all came true which is interesting but not as quickly as my scripting comes true now so watch my scripting video for that but I remember when I was at the Royal College of Art a similar thing happened where they had misbilled, they had given me a thousand, they had given me and some people a thousand pounds back as like a bursary or something and then they'd realised they'd made a mistake and over given us back the money and I was just about to graduate and I'd gone through all of this shitty stuff with like the sexism and everything and um, they suddenly were like you owe us a thousand pounds or you can't graduate and I had paid my way through art school with like a loan and working as a waitress before and saving up money. I always had the belief that I always have enough money so I always did so I could afford it but suddenly I had this bill out of the blue and I didn't want to pay ask my parents to pay it um, and I really couldn't pay it because I was at art school so I didn't have time to have a job. It was just before we were graduating they were like well you might not be able to graduate and I was like fuck no and I knew that I, <laughs> I believed in manifestation I wasn't that good at it I was okay but I was like, this is gonna go away. And I remember I was, I went to the student union and actually I'd kind of had a thing with the guy who was the head of the student union and we'd had like a bit of a not liking each other, but then we really bonded over me trying to get this money back because he thought I was like powerful. But basically I remember sitting with the Dean and the Dean being like, you'll get an apology, but there's no way you're gonna get the money back. And I was like, I don't care about the apology, but I'm getting the money back, or I'm getting the money wiped off my bill. And he was like, it's never gonna happen, it's never happened. The other people that didn't get it, I was like, well, I will. And I just went away and kind of imagined that it had been their mistake and that I would never owed them this money. And I don't even know the bridge of incidents of what happened, but basically a couple of weeks later, I was sitting again in the Dean's office and he was like, I cannot believe this, this has never happened. The head of finance refuses to apologize to you, but the money has been cleared, like it's fine, it's, we've written it off. And I just instantly revised it because I decided it had never happened. I was like, nope, never happened. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But in my, not to them, because I would sound crazy, but in my mind, I was like, this fuck up never happened, all my fees are paid, and um, I'm graduating. And of course I did, and you know, I got all the top marks and everything, but this weird little blip with the money went away. So that was me doing revision before I even knew about revision. Um, but I would revise things like bills and stuff like that. I actually talked in another video where I revised another bill, or I didn't revise the bill, but I revised another company owing me money, which was the exact amount to cover a bill. So I use it for things like that, unexpected things that aren't related to my manifestations that I've already got in progress. Because when you've already got a manifestation in progress, you just don't know that the thing you're revising might be the bridge of incidents to get you what you want. So I just think there's no point. I think that's trying to micromanage and manipulate and control your environment, which has nothing to do with manifestation. It drives me nuts when people say that manifestation is manipulation. It is not. It's only manipulation if you're using the techniques like affirmations to reprogram your subconscious mind and behave differently in a way that is like to do with psychology. And of course that can work, 
but that's not manifestation. That's using manifestation techniques to like psychologically change yourself. It does change your self-concept when you manifest because it, you're shifting state. But for me, it's much more of a uh, spiritual process of literally jumping realities. Sometimes I will say to clients things about, you know, reprogramming because I, maybe they're not as spiritual as me and I want to give them something that they can tangibly believe in if I think they need it. But honestly, it's a limited way to manifest. But if it works for you, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But you want to try instead of micromanaging everyday stuff, just going to the end just the end of what you want, visualizing it, affirming it, scripting it enough till it feels true and done, and then letting it go. And whatever happens, even if it looks like it's going really against what you want, it doesn't matter. It's just a bridge of incidents to get me what I want. I don't care. I'm not going to react internally or externally. It's done. That's how you manifest. But for the things that pop up that like are patterns within you, revision very helpful for the things that pop up unexpectedly not related to something that you've been trying to manifest revision is really good so yeah i've used it for relationships i've used it for bills um i would use it for stuff like that um another way of doing revision which i do do which is not it, it's more to do with living in the end but you can do it in a kind of day-to-day -day basis is when i'm falling asleep at night um, I will sometimes revise my day as if I'd had the perfect day. But this is not putting out fires because it's with an emphasis on what it is that you want in the end. So it's not like you're just... Because the thing is, some people manifest in steps in a way that is putting out fires, as in if someone's blocked them, they'll manifest someone texting them. That's so pointless. Why don't you just manifest the end result? Because someone might text you, but it doesn't mean that you actually get what you want, which is the relationship. But say you did revision every, because Neville Goddard used to do a technique where it's like you fall asleep in the wish fulfilled every night and you revise your day before you fall asleep so that you've had the perfect day. And maybe I would do that in a way of like, say I wanted to be married to someone, as I'm falling asleep, I would just imagine twisting a wedding ring on my finger. That implies that I'm happily married and I imagine maybe they're lying in bed with me. This is just an example. Um, but it wouldn't be in this way of micromanaging. It's still in a way where it's like the end result. But yeah, you can do something where you kind of, as you're falling asleep, you revise your day. So you imagine that you made the amount of money you wanted to make, that you had a perfect day, that everything was in alignment, that you're with your specific person, if that's what you want, or that you're in your dream home, or you know, you fall asleep imagining walking along the beach in the, in the place you wanna go and visit, whatever, right? So that's another way of doing revision. It's like before you go to sleep, you imagine your day again perfectly. But I would again, be sure you're focusing on the end result and not this micromanaging because you just don't know the way your bridge of incidents goes. And I think the thing that I do where it's like everything is just part of my manifestation unfolding is probably a way of doing instant revision anyway, where you're just like, whatever happens, I'm getting what I want. Um, because manifestation is, it's, it's not, logical so you can't be logical about it like well if i'm gonna marry this person then they can't have blocked me today i mean that's too logical it's not the way it works trust me from every manifestation i've had i write down i do my scripting every day of what i want as if i've got it but i also write down every manifestation i've had and i've had you know probably thousands in the 15 years i've been manifesting and i get more and more good at it but i write them down and if and unless it's something simple like manifesting a free coffee, I, but even that one, because that took me a while to get, and I started manifesting free coffees when I would find cards that other people had stamped up until the free coffee. Because <laughs> I had a bit of a limiting belief about the free coffee thing. I've spoken about this before. Because for me, getting a coffee is one of the um, placebo things I can do to make myself manifest money. So it's like a trigger because I associate whenever I have lots of money with me going and getting coffees for myself and being very bougie. So for me, getting the cup of coffee is very linked to something else. So whenever I need to manifest money, even if I had like no money in my account, I would buy myself a coffee and then I would get money because it becomes a trigger. So the coffee thing was a bit loaded for me. But you know, every manifestation that I, I do, I write down the bridge of incidents because then I look back on it when I'm, 
having trouble believing in manifestation, which everyone has doubts. And I instantly remember, oh my God, you can manifest anything. And the bridge of incidents is always so weird. Like it's never how you expect it to be. It's never that the person suddenly like sends you a message and then they ask you on a date. It's never that linear in my experience for me about manifestation. It's always like you have a huge row with the person, but then suddenly they show up at your door. It's always, or, you know, with my holiday, I went back on the radio and then someone had to move in with me and then it all unfolded to go on the holiday and then the safe closed and then the Wi-Fi was crap and you know it was all a bit weird but in the end I got a completely free holiday to the place I wanted to go and it was an amazing holiday. Nothing about the Wi-Fi breaking was actually an issue. Do you know what I mean? It's not like it actually affected it in a bad way, but it was a weird bridge of incidents. So I just think had I gone on that holiday and revised the Wi-Fi breaking because it was inconvenient to me, I might have fucked up getting this like free credit and room upgrade, which is what made the holiday like even more amazing. So I just think if you can feel that your manifestation is unfolding, don't mess with anything that happens during that process that is linked to your manifestation. But in terms of if you have relationship patterns or patterns with finances or things from your past that you think are affecting you now, such as, you know, I mean, trauma in your childhood, get a psychiatrist if you want. I got to say as well, manifestation is not therapy. Um, if you need someone to hold your hand and sit with you and like help you change your psychological beliefs, get a therapist. If you need someone to sympathize and empathize and be in your old story and, and feel sorry for you, and that's not to say that's a negative thing, but if that's what you need, get a therapist. Manifestation is like self-empowerment. It's like, we're gonna rewrite that story. But if it's, that's something you feel like you can't do, like that's too triggering, do therapy and then manifest once you've worked through the therapy stuff a bit. But manifestation is not therapy, but you can use it on maybe on top of therapy if you need it, if you've had traumatic things in the past and you've got to a point where you can now, you're ready to create something different to free yourself from those cycles. So it can be really, really good for that. Uh, are there other ways you can revise? I mean, with affirmations, as I said, always, or adding anything where it's like, I've always been chosen, I've always been rich, I've always had enough money, um, that is instant revision in an affirmation. So it doesn't matter if you like affirmations or scripting or visualization, you can still do revision in all of these different ways. Again, it's just another technique. But the main way you manifest is just to live in the end. Revision can just be helpful if you've got some kind of, um, because basically whatever you visualize and, 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 and imagine will manifest unless you have a stronger limiting belief or inner belief that is fighting your outcome. And that's where revision will be very good because it releases that past thing. And it can be the lot, for a lot of people, doing revision is the last, um, chink in the chain or it's the last little thing they need to tweak before things manifest because they've already planted that seed through their visualization their affirmations and all of that stuff they've planted that seed really well in fact they may be you know overdoing the visualization and not detaching enough but then if they do the revision it's like the the part of you that's maybe fighting against it because okay so say you want to marry a specific person you visualized it it's done it's done as soon as you visualize it as soon as you desire it it's because it means it already exists in another reality and you visualizing it is not even you creating it it's just you hopping into that reality right so you, once you've done that you've set the thing in motion but if you then have this belief because of in your past you were never chosen that is another kind of thing that is stronger than the thing that could slow it down. So if you can revise that, boom, all doors, all gateways open. I believe that manifestation is shifting realities, totally. Um, and I do sometimes do quantum jumps and quantum leaps and meditations for myself where I shift state, shift reality. And people think that it's like you wake up in a totally different universe where things are flying. I mean, maybe that is for some people, but when I do it, 
everything looks the same but there's something that's a little bit different and yesterday I did a and after you revise that might be why something is a little bit different in your reality after you've done the revision people may remember the event differently like you or you may notice that something in your house is a bit different than it was so yesterday after I did the um, meditation I opened my eyes I was in the bath doing it and my cat was looking at me like I was a complete stranger for five like five minutes she was totally freaked out god knows what she kind of vis like witnessed happening right but she was like what the fuck and solstice just was my cat was very different to me for a little bit because she obviously noticed something but I've done it before where you've like lost an item but then you find it or just something in your reality is slightly different a friend has shorter hair than they used to have it will be something small but that will show you that you've shifted states and that you've shifted realities but you may not notice it and that doesn't mean that you haven't shifted but you may notice it and that's a very clear sign that although what you've tried to manifest or revise doesn't feel like it's instantly done if there's something different in your reality likely that you've shifted states again if you have mental health issues you know this is not a mental this is not therapy it's not a replacement for mental health and i don't want people to get crazy about like being delusional but honestly i'm not mad and i've seen shifts in my reality i even have a therapist who tells me i'm not mad and just loves hearing my manifestation stories so although i may sound a little crazy talking about this stuff the proof's in the pudding. I'm the only person that ever got the RCA to give them the money back. I managed to go on holiday for free. I told everyone I would. Um, you know, this person is showing up in my life completely differently. If I'm mad, it's working for me. Do you know what I mean? And you guys can see that it's true. So maybe it's okay to be a bit delusional. Not that I'm advising you guys to be delusional, but, and I think in a way you have to be kind of not crazy to manifest because if you are just delusional and wishful thinking and like um you probably are not detached enough to manifest you need to be kind of detached and emotionally stable i think to manifest properly and you need to not react emotionally to whatever happens in the reality in front of you because you realize and you have enough faith that the reality in front of you is basically a hologram and it's on a delay so anything you're seeing in the 3D is old stuff manifesting, so you're not even bothered by it. Or it's your bridge of incidents, which could be weird. So you're just focused on your end result and that's it. Um, yeah, I hope that's helpful, guys. Let me know in the comments if you've had any sex successful revision stories. I told one of my friends about revision and they walked past the place where their ex was and they thought their ex didn't see them and I was like just revise it if that's bothering you not that I would do that because again that could be messing with the bridge but it bothered them so I was like revise it and imagine that they saw you and then they saw this person a few weeks later and the person was like I ran out after you but you weren't there did they revive I mean who knows whether that's what would have happened or not but I'm telling you it works guys and it doesn't just change your perception of things and make you feel a bit better it actually changes the past, which changes your future trajectory. Past, present, future are all in one, like they're all running parallel to each other. So whatever you change in the past changes now and the future too. It puts you on a different timeline towards something better if you're revising something bad to be something that you prefer okay much love light and positivity to you guys remember to vote in the community poll for the next uh video the next one i'll make sure it's a reading because this has been a teaching video again like comment subscribe let me know what you've revised if you want to do manifestation with me there's a link to my etsy store i recommend it i am very experienced and confident in telling you guys how to create the reality that you want for yourselves all the best take care and much love